Sutra, the treasury of the first common is the fundamental, wonderful, perfect mind. Commentary is also called the treasury of the first common and the fundamental, wonderful, perfect mind. Basically, wonderful, perfect, and pure, it pervades the Dharma realm. It is so great that there is nothing beyond it, and so small that there is nothing within it. This fundamental, wonderful, perfect mind is different from any Dharma. In what way? Sutra, it is not the mind, nor emptiness, nor earth, nor water, nor wind, nor fire. It is not the eyes, nor the ears, the nose, the tongue, the body, or the mind. It is not form, nor sound, smells, taste, objects of touch, or dramas. It is not the realm of eye consciousness, nor any other, up to and including the realm of mind consciousness. Commentary. It is not the mind, not your conscious mind, nor emptiness, nor earth, nor water, nor wind, nor fire. It is not any of the four elements. They are all empty. This is called making all conditioned dharmas empty. It is not the eyes, nor the ears, the nose, the tongue, the body, or the mind. It is not the five skandhas or all the six sense organs. It is not form, nor sound, smells, taste, objects of touch, or dharmas. The six sense objects also are done away with. This is similar to the passage in the Heart Sutra which says, There are no eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, or mind, no forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, or dharmas. The realm of eye consciousness up to and including the realm of mind consciousness and no ignorance or ending of ignorance up to and including no old age and death or ending of old age and death. There is no suffering, no accumulating, no extinction, no way and no understanding and no attaining. The difference is that the Heart Sutra says there is no and the passage here in the Suragama Sutra says it is not. It is not implies that it might be something else. Here it says it is not, but later it says it is. It is not the realm of eye consciousness, nor any other up to and including the realm of mind consciousness. It is not the consciousness of the eyes or of the ears, nose, tongue, body, or mind. Our fundamental, wonderful, perfect mind is none of these. The Buddha has already discussed all of them, the six entrances, the five skandhas, the twelve places, the eighteen realms, and he said that they were the nature of the treasury of the first common. Now he says they are not. He has explained them to the point that everyone is confused and no one knows what to think. He says that they are and he says they are not. Ultimately, they are or aren't they? Are they or aren't they? There isn't any is or is not. Don't worry, they neither are nor are not. That's Buddha Dharma. There is no is and no is not. Sutra, it is not understanding, nor ignorance, nor the ending of understanding, or ignorance, nor any other, up to and including old age and death, and the ending of old age and death. Commentary, the Buddha swept away the Dharma as he spoke it. When the Buddha was about to enter Nirvana, someone asked him, Buddha, how are we to propagate the Dharma you have spoken? What do you suppose the Buddha replied? He said, I haven't spoken any Dharma. Now you shouldn't think from his answer that the Buddha had become slightly eccentric as he neared his death. He, that's not the case. He said, whoever says that I spoke a single word standards the Buddha. I never said a single word. So he spoke Dharma for 49 years and held over 300 assemblies but didn't speak a single word. How can that be? Basically, the Buddha spoke all dharmas, but after he finished speaking them, they disappeared. That's what's called sweep away all dharmas and separate from all appearances. It was to teach people not to be attached to dharma. It was to keep people from saying, I should affix myself to the dharmas the Buddha spoke. If people did that, they could not obtain the emptiness of dharmas. You want it to be that people are empty and dharmas are empty. So now, in 
this passage, the Buddha negates everything he has said. You say, I've obtained the emptiness of purple and dharmas, and so all I do from morning to night is sleep. I don't study anything at all. People are empty after all, so I just go to sleep. But then you still got sleep. When even sleep is gone, that really is emptiness. If there's still sleep, it's not emptiness. You want to make the attachment to self and drama is totally empty. The Vata Sutra says that the drama the first common spoke is like a raft. Imagine how tired you would get if you were to hoist the raft on your back and carry it with you once it has taken you across the river. The raft simply serves you to get you across the water. You have to relinquish it once you are across. In the same way, the Dharma's purpose is to extinguish our afflictions. Once the afflictions are gone, we don't need any dramas. Before your afflictions are gone, you can't do without the Dharma. If you reject the Dharma at that stage, your afflictions will just increase. Afflictions are endless. I vow to cut them off. Dharma doors are limitless. I vow to study them all. We study the Dharma doors in order to cut off afflictions. Now, let me tell you some true Buddha Dharma. You have to cut off your afflictions. If you study the Dharma for thousands of years and don't cut off your afflictions, it is the same as if you had not studied. How do I cut off my afflictions, you wonder? Just don't be turned around by the situations and states of mind that come your way. If you are not influenced by situations and states of mind, you have some samadhi power. That's Buddha Dharma. Why do you say that the Buddha Dharma has no ease or is not? The Sikh Patriarch told us. Basically, there is nothing at all. Where can the dust alight? And so these dramas are negated. If you can understand that the Buddha Dharma has no ease or is not, you can become enlightened. The Sikh Patriarch asked Hui Ming, When there is no thought of good and no thought of evil, what is the sensual seated Ming's original face? No thought of good is the case of there being no ease, no thought of evil is the case of there being no is not. Apply your effort to the point where there is no is and no is not, no right and no wrong, and try to figure out what kind of state that is. The absence of is and is not of right and wrong is itself the inherent Buddha nature, the fundamental, wonderful, perfect mind. If you obtain that, then you have everything. And you also don't have anything, but it isn't like your present attachment to that state. When you have everything, what do you have? You have all the Dharma gems in the treasury of the first come one. You don't have anything at all. This means you don't have any affliction. There are as many afflictions as there are Dharma gems in the treasury of the first come one. Why haven't you obtained those Dharma gems? Because you have too much affliction and there is no place in your stomach for so many things. Thus, if you have a lot of affliction, you have only a little drama water, small drama nature. If your afflictions change, they themselves are the drama water, they are your drama nature. Don't fear that you have too big a temper. The bigger your temper, the greater your drama nature. But don't keep letting it turn into temper, because if you do that, you counteract your own intelligence. You start out smart and end up stupid if you do that. The Buddha Dharma teaches you to cut off your afflictions, and the afflictions become body, just as ice melts into water. When water freezes, the ice is draw afflictions. When it melts, it becomes body. There's nothing so terribly difficult about it. All you have to do is change, and you can be successful. It is not understanding, it's not enlightenment, or nor ignorance, nor not the falseness that arises from the one truth, nor the ending of understanding or ignorance, nor any other, up to and including old age and death, and the ending of old age and death. The dramas of the travelings of conditioned 
causation are also mid empty. The drama now being explained is the empty treasury of the first common. Next, the treasury of the first common, which is empty and yet not empty, will be explained. So you see, the treasury of the first common is not just one simple thing. It has these several distinctions. You can't just know a single term in the Buddha drama and assume that you understand it all. You may know only about the treasury of the first common, but you must also make empty the treasury of the first common and know the treasury of the first common which is not empty and then you have to realize the treasury of the first common which is empty and yet not empty. A lot of trouble. Sutra It is not suffering nor accumulation nor extinction in other way. It is neither knowing nor attaining. Commentary in this world, there are many kinds of suffering. First, there are three sufferings. There are also eight sufferings. The three sufferings are the suffering within suffering, the suffering of decay and the suffering of process. Suffering within suffering is experienced by poor pupil. For example, poverty itself is a kind of suffering and it becomes suffering within suffering when someone who is poor gets sick and has no money to see a doctor. Or perhaps a poor person lives in a broken down hut and suddenly the rainy season hits. Living in the hut was suffering enough, but with the rain leaking in everywhere, there isn't much difference between being inside the hut and outside. When I was in Hong Kong, I lived in a room that leaked when it rained. Above my bed alone were six holes where the rain put in. Wouldn't you say that was suffering? Although it was suffering, I did not repair the leaks in my own roof. When I had a little money, I wanted to use it to help other people. That's the kind of stupid person I was. During that time, I gave $1,500 to help sponsor the carving of Buddha images for a temple that was being established. I could have repaired my roof for about $200, but I couldn't bear to use the money to fix my own roof. I wanted to help make the Buddha images for that other temple. And people think that person doesn't know how to keep books. He can't separate his own business from other people's. Suffering within suffering occurs when someone has to endure poverty and then, in addition to being penniless, he can't even get any clothing for food or food, or someone who has no money suddenly learns of the death of his father and can't afford to buy him a coffin. I had that experience also. When my mother died, I was at her side, but I didn't have a cent in my pocket. The coffin had to be purchased, but what was I to do? When I talked it over with my brothers, we all looked at one another. No one was able to do it. I said, well, if you can't manage it, I will go ask a friend to help. Fortunately, I had some friends whom I investigated the Buddha drama with, and among those friends was one who sold coffins. When I told him my mother had died, he immediately said, No problem, you select any kind of casket you want. Don't, I don't need any money now. You can pay me when you get it. Not only that, I'll give you $1,000 on loan for you to use now. Because I ordinarily like to help people, there were people who wanted to help me when something of mine came up. But that experience was another example of suffering within suffering. From the moment my mother was buried, I really put everything down. I paid no attention to the fact that I was in debt. I just stayed by the grave to practice filial piety. The suffering of decay happens to wealthy people. Originally, they are wealthy and then somehow or other their wealth is destroyed. Suppose, the, for example, some people make a lot of money and hide the bills in their house. Instead of putting the money in the bank, then the house catches on fire and the whole what burns up. Burns up. 
or maybe the gold is stolen by thieves or maybe you're so attached to your money that you carry it everywhere with you never able to part with it until one day you're not careful and you lose it all then there is the suffering of the life process although you don't undergo the suffering within suffering as those who are poor do and you don't undergo the suffering of decay as those who are wealthy do you still have the suffering of passing from childhood to adolescence to middle age to old age to death this process flows on continually without cease and it is also suffering those are the three sufferings